Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and today we continue with our topic of discussion and that is genetics. Uh, at this point I would like us to discuss something that we call sex determination. Uh, sex determination, we want to find out, for example, how sex is determined. Uh, for example, we would like to ask ourselves, uh, what are the chances of getting a male child and what are the chances of getting a female child? And we can be able to demonstrate that by use of some genetic uh, diagrams. Now, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, we say that a man or a human beings, let's say human beings have 46 chromosomes. That is 23 pairs in every somatic cell, in every body cell. And 23 chromosomes, now not 23 pairs, but 23 chromosomes in every gamete, in every gamete, that is the sperm cell or an ovum. Now, uh, out of uh, these 23 pairs in a somatic cell, so we have 23 pairs, I want to divide it into two. Uh, the 23 pairs, out of those, there are 22 pairs that are responsible for all the other body characteristics. The color of the skin, the tallness, the shape of the nose, the lobed or the attached ear lobe. Uh, all those characteristics, they are contained within 22 pairs of chromosomes. But there is one pair, and this pair is the one that determines sex. And this pair is what we refer to as the sex chromosome. And then the 22 pairs, we refer to them as autosomes. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes in every somatic cell. That is a body cell, not a gamete, but a somatic cell. A gamete, you said, has only 23 because it will one day undergo fertilization. And if it goes undergoes fertilization, we get 23 plus 23 to get 46. So these 46 or these 23 pairs are the ones that are divided into two. Uh, we have 23 pair, 22 pairs. These ones we refer to them as autosomes. And they are the ones that determine other body characteristics. So these ones determine other body characteristics. Then we have this one pair that we are referring to as the sex chromosome, and this is the one that determines the sex. It's the one that determines the sex. And uh, this pair can either be, or the sex chromosomes, can either be XX, what we refer to as homogametic. That means that uh, the gametes have, uh, they are carrying only X chromosomes. So XX, we refer to that, uh, that as a homogametic pair. Or XY, we have XX or XY. And this one is what we refer to as heterogametic. Heterogametic is whereby some of the gametes have X chromosome, others have Y chromosome. They are not occurring together, but we are saying that some of them have the X chromosome, the others have the Y chromosome. But in the homogametic, all the chromosomes carry the 
X, uh, all the gametes carry the X chromosome. <coughs> now, XX is responsible for the female sex, while XY is responsible for the male sex. So you're saying that males are XY and the females are XX. So that means that if the, there is a male parent, the male parent is XY and the female parent is XX. Then the question comes in, who determines the sex of the child? It's actually the male that determines the, uh, the sex of the child because they can either contribute the X chromosome in their gametes or they can contribute the Y chromosome. The female only has the X chromosomes. So if the male contributes the X chromosome to the gamete, then we have XX plus the X from the female, and that is responsible for a female child. But if the male contributes the Y chromosome in the gamete or the gamete that carries the Y chromosome fertilizes the ovum, then we shall get XY, and that is what is responsible for, uh, for the male child. And we can be able to show that in form of a genetic diagram. So we have the male, and then we have the female. So the parental phenotype, we are saying that this is the man, and this is the woman. The genotype, of the man is XY, while that of the woman is XX. We always use capital letters. <coughs> and we cross them. We cross them, the X sign shows the crossing. And then we have the gametes. Some of the gametes from the male will have, or from the man will have X. The others will carry Y. For the woman, all the gametes will carry X. The female doesn't have a Y. She is XX. So, uh, we can do a fusion. Now let's not use a Punnett square. We have used the Punnett square for so long for many times we can do that we get x x also we get x x then we have x y and x y so this is what you are calling the offspring genotype and the phenotype is the first two are daughters so we have two daughters and the last two are sons versus two sons and therefore we can get uh, the phenotypic ratio the phenotypic ratio is 2 is to 2. 2 is to 2 from here. Two daughters and two sons. And that is a ratio of 1 is to 1. So that is to mean when the ratio is 1 is to 1, there is a 50% chance, or we can say... <coughs> is a 50% chance or a half chance of getting either a male child or a female. 
child. So that is an indication that there is a 50-50 chance. So for every birth, there is a 50-50 chance of either getting a boy or a girl. So because we have seen that from the genetic cross that we have done, a man who is XY, the woman who is XX, if you do the crossing, there is a 50% chance of getting two daughters and 50% chance of getting uh, uh, two sons. So then the question comes in, then what happens to those uh, families where we have only daughters, for instance, or only sons? The reason is this, for every birth, there is a 50% chance. So you may get a son in that case. Even the next birth, there is a 50% chance you still get, can get a son. Even the third and the fourth and the fifth. But we are saying that, we are saying that for every birth, there is a 50% chance of either getting a son or a, or a daughter. And uh, a good way of uh, looking at this is by looking at the population of the world. The population of the world is uh, almost 50% 50, 50 male. I know the females have, are about 52 or 53 percent, while the females are about 47, 40, uh, the males are about 48, 47 percent. That shows that they are almost 50, 50. So that shows that there is a 50 percent chance of either getting a male or a female child. So in the assignment, the first question, what is the meaning of A, homogametic, and B, heterogametic? Two, using a punnett square, uh, show how sex is determined in human beings. So now we are not using the crossing, but now we do the punnett square or a, word, uh, or a uh, checkerboard to show how the sex is uh, determined. So you'll stop there until next time. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.